All right, gang, Professor McElroy here. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Everyone in the class is doing awesome so far. The first two learning modules, I think everyone is completely done, which is awesome. So we are through Photoshop and Illustrator. Good job with the little app icons. Uh, remember, if you tried to embed like some stylized typography for the name of your little app illustrations, make sure you make it a little bit bigger and pull it outside of the shape of the app and put it underneath like as a stylized name so that you have both the symbol mark and the little letter mark for the app itself. Uh, some of you went ahead and mocked it up in a screen or on a phone, which is awesome. Uh, I was really happy with, really pleased with the illustrations that each student has done in the class this session. So everyone's doing really well. It looks like each of the students really enjoy Illustrator too, for the most part, because they really spent some time doing some really detailed uh, illustration work in their out of book project. So very good job. Uh, everyone's doing really well in the book assignments too, plugging along. Uh, like I said, I think everyone in the cohort this summer is done all of learning module one and learning module two. I consider learning module three is a bit of an exhale. Uh, it's InDesign. I call it a container program. You're compiling Photoshop files, Illustrator files, uh, TIFFs. You're creating text in the document itself. It's for multi-page layout. I think it's a simple program simple in nature. There are some complexities to it when you start adding interactive elements to documents, but all in all, you're leveraging your Photoshop ability, your Illustrator vector work, and you're compiling it in this program that I call a container program. Uh, so I thought tonight for our lecture, we would build a little four page brochure uh, and we'll bring in a logo, we'll bring in some images, we'll talk about the master pages, we'll give a bit of a refresher of InDesign and we'll also start talking a little bit about professional layout. Uh, most of you, if not all of you, have started to really get a solid grasp of the design programs. Pretty comfortable in raster based uh, photo manipulation, AKA Photoshop pretty comfortable using basic drawing tools or vector compositions in Illustrator. Pretty good job. Uh, we're gonna try to make that leap towards digital illustration and some branding and things like that in other programs. Uh, and I think you'll have no problem whatsoever with the basic chapter assignments in InDesign. They are super simple. They're very easy in my opinion, as far as design software goes uh, because it's a container. You're importing things in, you're moving them to front and back, you're overlaying, compiling them. Yeah, there are some interactive elements in InDesign, but it's as simple as you want it to be. Uh, so we're gonna spend a little time just talking about professional layout and typography and kind of page layout and different things tonight because we should be pushing our ever understanding, our evolu evolution of design sense you know, doing some Google searches and being inspired for, by samples that are out there, taking a look at what is effective, what works well, what is good design, and start implementing that into your process when you're problem solving as a creative uh, visual communicator, right? As you're starting to design and create things original to your own, you should be looking for inspiration. You should be feeding your brain. You should be analyzing visual separation and hierarchy and where things are big and where things are small and why some things are on a white background and why some things are on a dark background. You should start processing now what makes effective communication. You're starting to get a good grasp of the basic foundational tools that a graphic designer uses, basic Photoshop and Illustrator and now InDesign. Now we need to make sure that we're being inspired by and building things that are professionally uh, attuned, things that are to, to a professional output so that we start creating things that not only are creative and use the software appropriately, but also are finished solutions that could be real in the real world. So we gotta make sure that we're being inspired by that. If you're doing an ad or a movie poster, look at ones that inspire you. Look at ones that you think are cool. Look at ones that would make you buy something and feed your brain on why that is. Why do you think that is good? Why are you attracted to it? What is the imagery? What is the placement of the elements? Because it's unlimited in the amount of inspiration that's out there for the world right? 15 billion plus web pages out there. There's tons of stuff out there to feed your brain, get you inspired, show you what is effective. Well, if you're buying the product or service, it obviously is effective. So what makes it effective? Start breaking it apart, start analyzing, start looking at the typography, start looking at image placement, 
all of those things. Now that we know how to use basic software, let's try to push our creativity to the next level, the level of professional application, professional aptitude, practicum solutions in the real world, branding that actually works, right? Don't just take it to the edge, push it over the edge. Don't just find elements that are great and have a good idea, finish them to completion. Make sure all the elements are there. Make sure you're solving the problem to its complete level, not just a preliminary rough or a preliminary layout or a basic design. Push it further, keep pushing the design. Okay, so that brings us over to Learning Module 3, which is Adobe InDesign. Remember, Adobe InDesign is a container program, which means everything you use for the program has to be put in a folder. Any images, uh, EPS files, Illustrator files, Photoshop files, any text documents, anything that is part of the composition needs to be in a root directory, needs to be in a client folder because everything in InDesign is linked. That allows us to preview in a high press or high resolution layout environment, but not have all the stuff embedded in the document. So remember, anything we put in, anything we create with layout, anything we manipulate, all that stuff has to exist inside of a client folder. I make my root directory in InDesign a client folder. Then everything I ever gather, I dump in there, including Word documents the client gives me with write-ups of information. Anything that I get that is part of my project, I put in InDesign. Can you package or flight a document after you lay out, lay it out and put it in a folder where it will pull everything from all the different places on your computer you've ever saved anything that's in the actual document? Yes, it's called flighting or packaging the document. So in theory, you could save images all over your computer. Oh, I like that and let's put it in this folder. Oh, I like that, let's put it in this folder. And oh, I like that, let's put it in this folder. As long as you don't put it in the trash can or the deleted folder, your document will actually flight or package it at the end of your design and put it all into a nice folder package for you. But don't lean on that because if you don't know where the stuff is, you might remove something before you're done with the document. And then when you flight your document, it doesn't know where the files are. It can't flight or package the files. So just know that. So the very first thing I'm gonna do on my desktop is create a new folder. And I'm gonna call it Canoe, C-A-N-O-O, -O, because I've been infatuated with electric cars lately. And there's a really funky company that just won the rights to, to produce the vehicles that will take the astronauts to the launch pad uh, when they are doing their different missions, eventually the mission to Mars, I would guess. But let's start a little bit smaller and just say, you know, sending them to the International Space Station and stuff like that. There's a, I think they're out of California, a really funky design company that made a platform of batteries that they've created all these different kinds of electric vehicles on. So I, would, I thought it would be interesting because A, it's really interesting, and B, it's a really good. Uh, kind of case study on images and text and all kinds of stuff that we can put together in a little four page brochure. So we're gonna do canoe. So the first thing I'm gonna do is save canoe as a desktop folder. That way, anything I create, <laughs> I'm gonna put in my canoe folder. So when I'm working with a client specifically in InDesign, cause it's a container program, I try to gather as many resources as I possibly can before I ever touch the software application. I already know multi-page design. I already know how to text wrap and flow text. I already know how to place images and manipulate the images and do the basic things in the program. <laughs> but I need to make sure I have all the stuff I need in order to lay my thing out. So I wanna start by just gathering resources. So if you're working on your out of book project for learning module three, I would recommend client first, make the folder and then start gathering all of your resources. The nice part about your Adobe Pressbook is each one of your chapter assignments already has the resources put into what I would consider a root or client directory. So you already have the folder because when you download chapter seven, it says chapter seven and everything you need is already in there. We're just building it from scratch because we're not using the book, we're using the resources we need to have access to. So we're gonna start with Canoe. And we've got to get some images and stuff. So we're going to talk a little bit about InDesign formatting and that sort of thing. But I'm going to go out to uh, Chrome. I'm just going to open up a new window. And I got to minimize all of my Hodges stuff so I can get out here. And I'm just going to do Canoe 
uh, cars, it doesn't even matter, uh, truck, because they have these kind of funky things going on. This is canoe. So canoe, uh, and if I do electric, I won't get just the truck. I'll get all kinds of the funky vehicles. This is the, uh, what you would consider like the minivan. This is the SUV. This minivan thing is what the astronauts are gonna take to the launch pad uh, when they build a bunch of them for NASA. So, and these are the funky vehicles with the weird side doors and the little steps and trays that pull out. It's built all on a battery system chassis where everything is just built on top of it. So you can actually see there's three different things. There's a van, a truck, and what would be like an SUV. These three things here, those are the three vehicles that they have that they're gonna be building. So let's talk about gathering resources, right? We gotta gather really high resolution resources, meaning the logo, any images we're gonna use. If I was needing to gather any copy, I would have notepad or text edit or word opened up and scraping all the text that I need to save as a text document. I would go as far as collecting all of my text in a notepad environment digitally and gathering all my assets, the logos, the images, anything I wanted to use, textures, backgrounds, anything I wanted to use, I would gather in my canoe folder before I ever went in InDesign. InDesign's a container program, which means it's there to collect all of my resources and lay them out in a seamless way. But it's only good, it's only strong, it's only best to use if you actually leverage all of the things you have prior to laying out. It's kind of like taking a piece of paper and folding it up and sketching everything out before you actually get into the program. If you're laying out a magazine, a newspaper, a menu, something that's multi, multi pages, a brochure, best practice is to gather everything you need to know how many pages you need, right? We call it a, a, a four up or an eight page layout, which means it's four and four for a total of eight when you print and fold and cut. So when I lay something out that's multi-pages, I do eight pages or four pages. It starts with four, but four, then eight, then ideally 16 and 24 and 32. Uh, I just got done a big, a big uh, brochure that I was creating for a company. And I made sure that they gave me enough images and copy for 32 pages because it's eight pages are on a duplex sheet of paper that's folded and cut in an 11 by 17 environment, which means eight and a half by 11, eight and a half by 11, cover and back, and then everything on the inside. So whether I had to have a single white filler page on the inside cover, because they only gave me 31 pages of content, or maybe it was 30 pages and the interior inside of the front cover and the interior inside of the back cover were white or empty and every other page was filled. So whenever you open up something and you see empty pages like in a textbook or maybe in a book that you're reading, it means that it didn't fall into the eight up process or four plus four process in the printing environment. When they print four on one side, four pages on the other, and they cut, fold, and bind the book, the best practice is eight at a time, eight, 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 eight. That's the cheapest way. That's the fastest way. That's the easiest way. So when you're laying out a multi, multi, multi-page thing, you definitely want to remember in your brain that the number eight is really important. You'll see things at the church. If you Maybe your church hands out a little pamphlet or a brochure, or you might just go to a small event and they give you a little pamphlet or brochure. And it might just be eight and a half by 11 folded in half. And basically it's front and back and interior front and interior back and that's it, right? So they only really pin printed a duplex document four total pages. And that's what we're gonna do tonight for layout purposes. Uh, that's fine too, but just know that once you get past that four, six really isn't an answer. You need to go to eight. And then once you go to eight, 12 is okay, but then you have four filler pages. So you might as well go to 16. Right, so that's kind of the thought process in multi-page environments. That's why you see certain layouts with menus when you go to restaurants, because they're trying to get to the magic number of eight. If they can't get away with four, they need to get to some number of eight because it's the most cost-effective printing process. Okay, so canoe. We need to grab some images. So you'll notice that I immediately set my settings to large, right? Remember, InDesign is 300 DPI 
and it's 100% final output, which means anything we lay out in InDesign is for first print production, even though you can export it as an interactive PDF, <laughs> but just know the original publication of it was for print. So it's high resolution, it's high quality, and it's 100% output. So when you bring an image into InDesign, it needs to be 100% final output. So if it's a really small image, when you place it in InDesign, it's gonna come in like the size of a stamp or a business card. If it's really high quality, it's gonna come in really big, right? If it's a big image. You can always scale down in InDesign. <laughs> it's tricky to scale up because remember, when you scale up, things get blurry, pixels get stretched. So we need the highest quality, highest resolution images we can. So we're gonna grab the truck, the SUV, and uh, and the uh, truck, the SUV, and the van. Those are the three things. We're just gonna grab three images, dump them in the folder, all at least 2000 pixels wide. We're gonna grab the logo. We're gonna go onto the website and copy some text and put it in a notepad. We're gonna build everything the way I would build it for a client before I go into InDesign for a multi-page environment. So let's grab some pictures. Uh, let's see here. How big is this one? <laughs> 2,500, that's a good image. So we're gonna click on that. Oh, these are some great ones. Save image. <laughs> this is actually the press page. So let's dump it into the canoe folder. It's a JPEG, which is fine. So I'm just gonna double click. Make sure it's in there. All right, so we got the truck, right? Is that the one we grabbed? <laughs> let's make sure. All right, good looking picture. Let's just see what different images we can grab. And I'm just gonna grab a bunch of them, right? Because you can never have too many. <clears throat> Let's see here. Dump that one in. So I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just grabbing a bunch of them. See what we can find here different setups, different layouts. Oops. I might have to screenshot this one because this one keeps saving as a web link and it can't be a web link. So that means they're trying to keep me from saving this image. So let's just see what I can do here. I'm just printing the screen so I can get a nice big copy of it. Dump that in there. <clears throat> let's see here. I would totally drive one of these. I don't know if while you're watching this lecture, you're like, I don't know, that's kind of weird. Look at this thing. Oh my gosh, with the suicide doors. I would absolutely drive one of these things. My wife would be like, I'm not getting in the car with you. Like this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. And she might be right, but <laughs> I think they're cool. <clears throat> Some of these are killing me. They're not letting me do a copy of it. Do, 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 do. All right, so let's see what we got here. Uh, that should be on the desktop somewhere. Dump it in there. It was just disappeared for a second there. <laughs> so you'll notice I'm just grabbing a bunch of pictures. I'm just seeing whatever I can find. That's interesting. So we got interior shots. We've got exterior shots. <laughs> That's a square steering wheel, which I'm not sure about.
Do, 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 do. All right, so let's save that. All right, so we got to go in and get Canoe's logo. So we need a high resolution version of the logo because we're going to need that for layout purposes. So let's see what we got here. Here's a huge one, which is a PNG, which is fine, which you might notice is transparent, which is good. Let's take a let's take a black version of it too because we might do a little pinstriping or something on it. So let's see if let's see where they put the black version of it. Is it a regular image or is it embedded in a video? Let's see what we got here. Here it is. Well, let me save it. Yep. Okay. Good. All right. So we got. So let's just take a look at what we have so far. <laughs> we got one logo. Looks like two logos. One, two three, four, five, five images or so. That'll get us started here. Um, let's do a search for <clears throat> their website. So I got to go to canoe.com. So here's their website. Here you go, NASA contracts canoe for transport vehicles for the human lunar landing. I don't know how many of these startup ele electric car companies are going to make it, right? Tesla. I don't know if you've ever sat in a Tesla or might know someone that owns a Tesla, but they're pretty futuristic. I mean, they're pretty cool. Uh, other than the fact that it's $8,000 to replace the batteries in that thing when the batteries die. Supposedly they don't die for a while, but oh my goodness, that is like a ridiculous amount of money. $8,000 to replace batteries. Okay, so I'm gonna go into text edit and I'm just gonna form my, my text to plain text because this is gonna be my document. I'll have my clients send me either in an email or a Word document or whatever desktop kind of publishing <laughs> software they feel most comfortable with, send me text. And I'll give them like certain things like give me your product descriptions, give me your story about your company, give me the text that you would like on your website or on a brochure or the things I might be building for my client. They send it to me in all kinds of different formats. So I get Word documents, I get PDFs, I get uh, notepad, I get whatever text program they have on their tablet, their iPad, their Samsung Galaxy, whatever it is. And I'm okay with that because as long as I can open it up as a text file, I can take my own file and compile everything from there. And that's what I do. So if I'm working on a client's project from scratch and they have a website, I'll go out and create a notepad document of all the text on their website. And then I'll send it to my client and say, what would you like to use for project X? If it's a brochure or if it's a, a annual report or if it's a postcard or whatever multi-page thing I'm doing, I will try to prep as much text as I can, scrape it from their website, uh, any advertisements or, or stuff they've already created. And I'll put it in a generic plain text. You're gonna notice I formatted this in plain text, not rich text, because InDesign will take the rich text, all the hyperlinks, all the text formatting, all the X HTML formatting that Word puts into it, it will embed it in your InDesign file with all of that code built into it. I don't want that. I wanna build mine from plain text so I can add all the formatting myself in InDesign based on the project that I'm building. So I set up a client folder. I gather all the assets I need for the project. I set up a plain text, non-formatted, notepad or text edit document and I scrape and dump all of the text I'm going to need for that project into that. And then I can exchange digitally between my client and myself, the text files. I'm here for layout. I'm here for visual communication. I'm here for effective design, but I need help from the client making sure that I have everything they dreamed they would like on their project, whether it's a website or a brochure or a menu or a postcard or a business card, right? Anything. That is what I would call multi pages of text. You got to kind of help your client because they're not designers, but you're not the owner of the product or service. You need to know what they want to say. So it's really important that they help you too. Now, you'll notice on canoe.com right at the top, there's a pre uh, press release. So we're just going to click on that. And here's the press release for the NASA article. Uh, we don't need that one. We don't need that press release because that's specifically about their contract they got with NASA. So we need to go over here to their little drop down 
and let's see what they have. So the very first thing we need is about, right? We need to learn about the company. So you're gonna notice right here is about us. So I'm actually just gonna copy about us. I'm gonna dump it in my notepad. I'm gonna hit enter twice because I'm gonna use categories to separate my text. So I'm gonna copy just the about us text and I'm gonna dump it in right there. And you're gonna notice, take a look at what happens. It's plain text, it is unformatted, but it's correctly written hopefully so that when you're taking it from web or from a press release or from anywhere that there might be relevant copy, right? Relevant text, so we're not using filler text, we're not using Latin text, we're actually using text that matters. We wanna make sure that it's appropriate and written well. So let's see what we got here. Uh, I'm just looking at the different areas of the site. So we got to start with the about. Uh, let's go to sustainability, right? So I'm going to, and you're going to notice that I'm taking the categories. Now, in this case, we're really lucky because the website is broken into really clean, beautiful categories. And those categories will be perfect for our little brochure we're creating. So I'm going to put some extra spaces in between it. Remember, spaces don't matter when you're building in a basic plain text environment. So we can add as many spaces as we want. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just copying some of these primary areas. I don't want filler text. I don't want Latin text. So when you're building your final out of book projects, you shouldn't be using filler text. You should be selecting clients that you have enough material, enough information that you can actually build this thing and not have to use filler text. Students always give me something where they like wrote the first paragraph and then they just copied it over and over again just to fill the document. And yes, that's fine for layout purposes, but remember all this ragging, all the little widows at the end of lines and paragraphs, all that stuff gets replicated. So you get an unnatural negative space or an unnatural white space when you're reading the document if everything was copied from one paragraph. You see how this rags differently and some breaks here have fewer words, some have only two words right now. And watch, this is plain text, right? So as I pinch this thing, it rags. Well, look at the difference now of the copy I have so far when I pinch this into a one column, what we call one column layout. One column, and then this is about two columns, and then I could stretch it further for three columns if I wanted to. So just know that text creates negative space. <laughs> we call it ragging. So the amount of copy you have per page and how you use it to lay out, lay out your foreground, middle ground, and background in your positive and negative space has an effect. So you just need to know that, that Latin text, filler text is fine for layout purposes, but it doesn't create a true finished layout concept because it doesn't fill the space the way it should, that natural text would. Okay, so we got about, we got sustainability. Uh, let's do engineering, and that should give me enough copy to at least lay out kind of this brochure style thing I'm doing. I'll probably need some more pictures. Wow, look at this thing. Tell me technology isn't cool. This is Photoshop. This is an animated GIF where the image has a transparent background and it's just separated. So these are just images that have a transparent background. Think of it like stills. You snapped your camera like a thousand times and it created this rendering of still after still after still. This is just a transparent background grounded on this 3D piece of paper they put there and it creates this really funky thing. <laughs> Design is a beautiful thing. You can really pull people into interest. Look at this thing, so cool. Uh, you can really pull people in by design, by visual communication. So if you can dream it, you can really do it. So let's see here, what was the last one I did here? Sustainability, <laughs> so let's do engineering, but let's do it above sustainability because I think sustainability is probably the last thing I need in my brochure. So there it is. And I probably actually do need to put some extra enters in here just to make sure that I have this thing separated in a way that I can easily figure out what is what when I'm doing my layout. So this is a really best practice. You should be kind of compiling elements like this to make life a lot easier for you in layout purposes. So for now, I'm just gonna minimize 
my file and here's my untitled. So I'm gonna go in here, do save, and I'm gonna name it canoe brochure text or copy, doesn't really matter, text or copy. And I'm gonna make sure I dump it into my canoe folder. And you'll notice it's plain text, right? So I can copy this stuff. I can do whatever I want once I get it into my InDesign file. So here it is. So I've got a couple of logos. <laughs> I got four or five pictures. I have the beginning of my copy, my basic text that I could then send back and forth between client. I could edit and manipulate, get everything I need to kind of make this layout work. So I have the beginning pieces. I may need some more pieces later, but I'll put some empty frame containers in my layout to make sure that I have what I need. So uh, let's go in. We're going to go into InDesign and we're going to create a new document just so that you can remember. I'm just doing some refreshers here so you can kind of remember the navigation of it. Many of you probably don't know that there are templates built in InDesign and they have some beautiful layouts already built in <laughs> that you can open up the templates to start with. So just remember there's inspiration even in the program themselves. So you can see things like resumes, basic layouts, Here's uh, planners, here's media kit layouts, uh, flyers, event posters, uh, adventure posters. I mean, there's some really beautiful, simple grid layouts to start with if you need a little inspiration to get you going. It's important that you start training your brain for visual hierarchy, that you start training your brain for what should be big, what should be medium size, what should be small, what should be in the background, what should be in the middle ground, and what should be in the foreground, and where should I lean on effects, outer glows, drop shadows, outlining type, uh, background colors, like when should I use those elements to create my design. I spend a lot of time with either paper and pencil or my iPad just sketching out framework just sketching out and marking up where I want things to go visually so that when I compile 80% thought, 20% layout, 80% gathering elements, 20% designing, 80% branding, conceptualizing, thinking about where I wanna go with this thing, 20% laying it out, right? I spend a lot more time in asset development, asset collecting, element gathering, wireframe problem solving, thumbnail sketching that I ever do in final layout. I spend maybe 90% of my time problem solving and 10% of my time actually putting the thing together. If the idea isn't good, if the elements aren't there, if my concept isn't strong, if my visual understanding of how I can effectively communicate this product or service isn't on point with the potential customer or the target audience, I don't care how many tricks I use, how many bells and whistles I throw in there, how many overlays. I mean, I don't know design like the back of my hand. I can trick you into thinking something's good pretty easily, but it doesn't mean it will actually hit the target audience will actually be effective, will actually be a professional quality solution if I don't spend the time gathering assets, talking to the client, uh, getting material like text elements, getting the best images I can, having a concept that I sketch out prior to InDesign or Photoshop or Illustrator. I could spend my life drawing cats for, a, I don't know, a cat cafe logo, I could spend my life drawing cats, but if I don't have a good idea of how I'm gonna create the brand for the cat cafe, I can sketch as many cats as I want. But if their positioning, their color, the style of illustration doesn't match what my client wants, doesn't match what the target audience expects to see, isn't inspired by the industry that the logo is in, what it represents, then I can sketch a million cats and it's just a waste of time because the cats aren't going to be what I need them to be in order to build the brand that I need to build. So just know that a lot of time researching, a lot of time gathering inspiration, a lot of time gathering elements, a lot of time looking what the product or service already has out there, their ads, their website, their logo, any kind of promotional stuff, their vehicles, anything they've used, annual reports, postcards, business cards, 
anything they have produced because I need the color palette. I need the typography. I need the visual hierarchy. I need to know what the plan has been to know if it has to be reinvented, recreated, or manipulated or modified a little bit, right? So lots of time planning, up to 90% gathering, getting inspiration, uh, formatting, just composing, just getting the stuff I need. 10% production, 10%. And lots of times that 10% is like 10% to create the original and then like 2% to create the rest of the campaign pieces. So like when I asked for two posters, 10% creating the first one, then it only took like two or 3% of time in order to create the second one because you already had the template from the first one. But the first one took 80% in order to gather the resources, get the inspiration, think of the layout, know what the audience expects to see prior to the layout of the finished product. So don't just jump to the computer. Don't just start dragging and dropping things. Don't just start doing something without the research, the gathering of elements, the inspiration, the things that you need in order to create an effective solution, right? We need all the assets first. We need all the elements first. And then we need to make sure that our inspiration based on research, hits the audience that's appropriate for it to be hit. There's lots of barber shops out there. There's lots of hair salons out there. They don't all do the same thing. So you want to make sure if you're building an ad, a postcard, a website for a particular uh, barber shop or salon, who their audience is, right? Because those are all different too. So you need to spend time learning that, researching that, being inspired by that, prior to the construction of anything. I have so many students that are really talented technically, they have some great ideas, and then they get to the finished product and they just throw it like it was cut paper and they just dump it on the page. And yes, it's fine software wise, you did a good job using the software, but it doesn't mean necessarily that you did a good job communicating, that you did a good job branding, that you did a good job hitting the target audience. So just know that that's a big part of the battle. All right, so we're setting up a, a print piece of paper. Remember it's high resolution, so it's 300 DPI. Let's use inches just because that's the easiest measurement for most people. We wanna make sure we have facing pages, which means we're creating a spread. We're gonna do a total of four pages because it's a simple folded 11 by 17 uh, document, eight and a half front cover, eight and a half back cover, 11 by 17 interior spread. Very simple. We're gonna go with three columns because I love the thirds principle, which means two third one thing, one third another thing, never 50-50. So you very rarely will ever see me do two column, not in web design, not in print production, not in brochures, not in menus, not in anything I create. I do three column, it's the thirds, right? It makes your eye pick. So if it's two thirds one thing, one third another thing, your eye goes to two thirds first. If it's one third to the left, two thirds to the right, it leans to the right first, right? So if it's images two third, text one third, it goes to images first. If it's two thirds text, one third image, it goes to text first. That's how I manipulate the eye. That's how I get the consumer to absorb what information I want to, them to absorb in what order or process that I want them to. So if it's two thirds text, I use bold and italic, I use color change, I use scale variants. And that allows me to then control what in the two thirds of text I want them to read first, right? If it's images that are two thirds, I use scale, overlap, effects, different treatments to make your eye go to different things, color, based on the order I want them to process the images. So it's a game of thirds. And you've probably heard the principle of thirds before, but that's the concept. There isn't a 50-50. There is always 66 33, right, in essence. So you're making someone make a decision based on the number of columns the elements take up. Okay, we're gonna stick with the basic half inch margins, top bottom. We're gonna do the simple one eighth gutter. The gutter is the space between the columns just so that we have a little separation there. We're not gonna add a bleed or anything because most students with their first projects when they get out in the real world do not have a project where the client wants a bleed. And a bleed means that we want, we add one eighth inch of extra space around the document so they can be print, cutted, cut, folded and stapled. Very rarely <laughs> does a student 
ever have a first project be something with a bleed. Normally it's a nonprofit, a small business. They can't afford it. They want to print it on a piece of paper and just fold it and hand it out or fold it and staple it. So I'm going to stay away from the bleeds and slugs and stuff. So there isn't any extra space around the document. It's much cleaner for you to see it just as a simple 11 by 17 uh, folded and eventually could be glued or stapled depending on if there were multiple pages of that. But remember, we're doing a four. Once we go beyond four, you need eight, not five, not six, not seven, but eight. Because remember, 11 by 17 needs four up, four pages on one side, four pages on the other. So once you go beyond one piece of paper, one 11 by 17, you need to go to two pieces of paper, two 11 by 17s. So now you get into eight pages, not five, not six, not seven but eight. So remember that once you go past four, you need to go to eight. Ideally, you don't want to go to 12. You want to go to 16. So now you go from two 11 by 17 to four 11 by 17. So just remember the process, right? And that might mean filler pages because you don't have enough copy or images or anything for that. So you'll notice menus always are in four and then they jump immediately to eight. And very rarely do you see 12. They normally do insert pages or little single leaf pages that are added to the menu that they lay on top of the menu because it costs too much to print an odd number of pages. It means that it has to be manually put together. All right, so we're gonna create that. All right, so here we go. Now, this is gonna be part refresher. We're gonna talk design. We're gonna talk about a lot of things as kind of we explore this layout in this stuff because you gotta kind of, kind of walk back to where we were from graphic design one and we're going to walk really quickly forward so <laughs> real quick palette on the left hand side right select direct select simple things like text line segment your pen and your pencil and your container or frame tool and your shape tool uh your transform your gradient all of these things over on the left hand side which we navigated through a little bit in graphic design one and your chapters for InDesign will explore a little bit more over here in uh, graphic design two. And remember we have our <coughs> fill over here and our stroke on the edge, which is the same as Illustrator, right? So we're talking about shapes, shapes that are scalable and things that have a color in the inside and a color on the edge. Uh, we have our pages over here. So really quickly, front covers number one, back covers number four, Two and three is what's called our spread or our interior spread of our simple 11 by 17 folded brochure. And that's all we're doing here, just a simple four page. This is what you see with a lot of menus. This is what you see if you're going to help out with your church and they want to put a little, little brochure together or a little program for the service. Traditionally, it'd be in some little four page format like this. It might be eight and a half by 11 folded in half, or it might be 11 by 17 folded in half. <laughs> okay. And remember that there's a master page environment, which means the left spread and the right spread of these facing pages equals the left or even pages in A master left and uh, odd pages one and three, A master right. So just remember that as we manipulate in the master environment, it replicates it on all these pages. Also remember you can have more than one master, an A master, a B master, a C master, a D master, and you could actually change the style or the master formatting based on the page sequence down here. And that's how you get textbooks that have a different color system, like the intro to computers where Word is blue and Excel is green and PowerPoint's like a reddish orange, right? Each one of the tabs is a different color in the book to match the color of the software. All that means is Word is A master, uh, PowerPoint is B master, Excel is C master, and Access is D master. Just different colors, different master layouts based on the document itself. But remember, once you go past four, you wanna to go to eight, 16, 24, 32, that sort of thing. Okay, so you'll notice my gutter right here, my one eighth inch, you'll see my half inch border around the page and you'll see my three gutters. This is called the thirds, right? <laughs> this is that whole process of thirds, two thirds, one thing, one third, another thing. And it's nice to have the gutter because that gives us basic visual spacing where text and images do not interact. We do have what's called a text wrap, which means we'll have the ability to wrap text around images once we start compiling our elements, but it's a good place to start with visual spacing. You'll also notice we have ruler lines up here that I can pull and snap to get vertical and horizontal lines. Been working on my master bath, been doing some wood trim, 
doing some ship lapping, doing some detailed wall wood work, framing out and stuff. Gosh, I love the level and snapping lines, guidelines, so I can make sure everything's flush, everything aligns, everything looks good for the eye. I'm pretty good with the eye though. I've hung a lot of pictures in my day and I just have a good visual eye. So like when I hung the mirrors behind the vanity, I didn't really need the level. I could visually see what was level by hanging the mirrors, but <laughs> it's good to have a line snapped. Every once in a while, you'll see someone coming and lean their head a little bit in the house. Like, is that picture a little crooked or not? And I'll be like, mm, maybe I could nudge it up a little bit on the corner right, right? So I have a good visual balance eye, a straight line, but rulers help. So gutters and guides are really important and rulers are really important, right? And you'll notice in your view, rulers is an option, right? So if yours aren't turned on, you can turn them on. Now, I like to dance between a couple of different layouts. The very first thing I do whenever I'm working on anything, A, I have an iMac, I have some really powerful computers, a MacBook Pro, uh, I display in high performance. So when I'm working in InDesign, I make sure that my display performance is set to high quality. That means the images I bring in will look 100% output clear, which means there won't be any high fidelity versus low fidelity or kind of pixelation of image or distortion of image in order for the computer to run fast, right? Here's like really low resolution. Here's like moderate screen resolution. And this is print output resolution. I always set my document to high quality. I want to see how good the images are at 100% while I'm working inside my layout, right? I wanna make sure everything exactly the way I want it. Now, I'll often work, <coughs> I'll often work and I'll actually turn my guides off, which means my gutters and everything I'll turn off because I'll take my ruler lines and I'll snap the lines to where I need them to be in my layout. I'll actually take this ruler line and I'll drag my ruler line over and I'll drop it in to all the areas that I have for my columns. So you'll notice I can actually take my ruler lines and snap them top, bottom, left, right. And then I'll actually take it and put each one in between my columns. So you'll notice that I kind of block this thing in <coughs> so that I know where everything is. I'll do that. And I'm actually just gonna undo with Command Z uh, just so that I then, if I wanted to, I could turn off my guides. Right, I can turn my guides off, but then it looks just like a blank piece of paper. So you see this, this is a blank piece of paper. Without those ruler lines, I would have trouble with my columns, my, my two third, one third concept, right? My rule of thirds. So for the sake of the lecture, I'm gonna leave these elements in place where they are. It will help with text wrapping and flowing, but honestly, I do high fidelity or high quality, and then I turn my guides off. I wanna work with a white piece of paper. And part of the reason I wanna do that is because by nature, I want negative space to really be prominent. I like a minimalistic approach when you're laying out multiple pages. I want a lot of what you call white space or negative space. So if I turn these guides off and I just use some basic ruler lines, I can still say in the process of the thirds, but I don't have to deal with the uh, extra busyness of the pinks and the purples and the gutters and every the bleeds everything that i'm working on so just know as you evolve in in design that's something i by nature just kind of do because uh it helps with clarity of message as i'm bringing things in okay so before we go any further i'm, I'm going to do a save as and i'm going to do canoe underscore brochure 2022 and you'll notice i tend to name things based on the client the product and the year and so my client's canoe, it's a brochure and it's 2022. And that way, if I ever have to flight this package, it save it and then make a copy of it, which means duplicate the folder, I could name it 2023, go into my InDesign, do a save as and change the canoe brochure to 2023. So I always start with my client folder. I can duplicate my client folder. I can rename the folder by years, but I already have the framework started. I volunteer a lot for building multiple page things, brochures and all kinds of things for uh, like the high school and some of the little league stuff and things like that, that my kids have been involved in. So they call me up and I'm like, oh yeah, I got 2021. I'll just make a copy of it, replace the images, change the color palette, change the cover, and we're good to go for the next year. 
So as long as you package that thing, you have it all together, you save it as a client, a project in a year in your file name or your folder name, you're good to go. So kind of best practices as we evolve here. Okay. Now we have our multi-page layout. Remember there's a properties, properties tab, and that's the equivalent of the properties running along the top of your page in Illustrator, properties run on the bottom of your page in Dreamweaver, right? This is kind of the basics of what we have going on. <laughs> now you'll notice that things like the margin down here are already preset. Well, if you know anything about framing a picture, the bottom margin should be bigger than the top margin. So I'm gonna unlock that. And I'm gonna add a little extra margin to the bottom of my page. So you see what I'm doing? I'm bumping it up to one inch. So you're gonna notice actually the bottom is bigger than the top. So let's take a look at this thing, right? I've now bumped up my margin to one inch and it actually has bumped it up in my master too, which is a beautiful thing. This is the document settings. So it adjusts in my master and it also adjusts in all my pages. So let's say you're laying something out. It's a 32 page document and you're about 32 pages into it and your client's like, oh man, I wish there was a little extra white space in the bottom of that document. Oh, no problem. I'll go into my properties of my document and change the white space at the bottom, change the margin at the bottom. So we just adjusted it a little bit more. I adjusted it a little bit more also because I wanna put like a logo down there. I'm gonna write some text uh, down there. I wanna format this thing for in essence, a brochure. All right, so if we needed to adjust something, we can adjust them for the document right here. A very simple adjustment is that little thing of adding some extra space there, right? I'm just adding some extra space there. All right, so let's go back into the pages. Let's make sure we're in the master, right? So we're gonna double click up here. We have left master <laughs> and right master, right? So traditionally in a brochure, uh, a menu, something like that, you normally have some numbering of pages. You normally have the client name inside of the interior pages because sometimes they get separated. So you have to have that name at least somewhere inside the interior spread. And traditionally you have a product name or whatever the thing is. If it's a magazine, it's like the name of the magazine and the issue or the name of the magazine, the issue and the article name, right? All these things kind of float inside the master environment. Uh, so we're gonna do <laughs> first and foremost, we're gonna uh, do uh, the name. So we'll put the logo first. So let's, uh, let's take our document. We're in the right master of our A master. We're gonna go in and place, and <laughs> we're gonna go in here and grab our logo. Now, when you import something in, right, you get this little container and you can click and drag and it will place it proportionately, which is what we did. So it replaced the logo proportionately. Now, remember when I double click on this, that right, that orange border is the size of the object inside of the container. When I just click on the container, the blue border is the container. So think of the container like a picture window. And when you double click on it, the orange that's inside of it is the uh, poster inside the picture window, right? Or frame. So, but you can also do it by drawing with the little frame or container, right? So if I click and drag here, I can actually just draw any size container I want. So I'm gonna take the container, I'm gonna move it down to the lower right-hand corner. I'm gonna make the container smaller. So it fits inside my margin. Now, remember, you don't wanna be right on the edge. This is like the cardinal rule of students that are first learning layout. Do not put this container all the way down on the bottom here. This document is not a full bleed. It needs a one inch, one eighth inch one sixteenth, depending on the printer, but really a one eighth inch uh, border around the edge of it so that it doesn't get cropped or cut when it's printed. So let's just give ourselves a little extra wiggle room there. So you can do it with the container or the frame tool, or you could just do file place and click and tap or file place, click and drag, and you can drag the container whatever size you want. I like to draw my frames first. So I'll actually draw all of my frames right? Before I ever place a single image. So if I know I need the logo in the master and then on the page number one, I'm going to double click on it. <laughs> page number one, I want to have a big picture that pretty much takes up the entire middle right here. I'll actually draw my container for that picture 
before I actually go in and grab any pictures. So this is just like thumbnailing, right? So for the left interior, I think I want it to be two thirds pictures and one third text. So I'm just gonna do that. And then for the interior next page, I'm gonna draw, drag my containers. And I think it wanna be two thirds text and one third pictures. So I'm just drawing some containers here to kind of fill in my thirds principle. So now you can see that uh, and the back page, traditionally the back page has a logo down the bottom and it has the contact information. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a container for the logo for the bottom right there so that I have all of my elements. So you can see them in my thumbnails, right? I got a big picture there. I got two big pictures on page number two. I got three small pictures on page number three and I have a space holder for my logo on page number four. And you also notice in the master that I put the logo that's gonna appear on every page down in the corner here. You wanna make sure you use a master because you wanna make sure you get the elements that appear on every single page in the master. We can always override the master for individual pages that don't need the elements that are in the master. But as long as you start with the master elements first for all the other pages, because imagine in a 32 page document, there might only be four pages that don't need the master elements, the elements that appear on every single page. It's much easier to use the master lay out all of the 28 pages that require all the elements from the master and remove the four pages with those elements than to do it the other way around, right? So you wanna make sure that only elements that appear on every single page are ones that you place in the master. Now remember, right master is odd, left master is even, right? All right. I like to spend time in the InDesign lecture to really talking about professional application. Your book already has beautiful solutions. They're very easy to follow along. You make some really cool professional solutions that already have all the elements already laid out for you. But unless someone explains to you why the elements are where they should be or where they are, why they're the size they are, why they're organized <laughs> in the way that they are, it's much easier much harder just to edit the elements and say, yeah, that's a great design. But then when I ask you for the out of book to create your own design, you don't understand the element process of how that project came to fruition, why it looked the way it looked, what was the rationale from the designer that made that Adobe project <laughs> that they used inside the book. Keeping in mind that the book we use is Adobe Press and it's Adobe certified, which means that they are experts in InDesign putting together the projects to make sure it hits all the key kind of steps and features of the software, but nowhere does it really teach you why the elements are there or why they look the way they do or why something is laid out the way it is. It just teaches you the technique for editing it. So it's good to kind of think the process through in multi-page design just like you would in Photoshop and Illustrator. <laughs> the difference with Photoshop and Illustrator is you're creating one-offs, what we call one-offs, one poster, one advertisement, one business card, one logo. In InDesign, you're creating a 60 page document sometimes. I worked for an engineering firm and we would do proposals for master plan communities. So we would propose our services to builders or we would propose our services to a county or to the state to do design work or planning work or infrastructure work. All of those books were multi, multi pages and each book had each service separate. So if we had landscape and we had utilities and we had engineering and we had planning, all of those things were part of one book that we laid out printed and bound in-house. So we're talking major, major, major pages. So InDesign was the program to use, but it was really important because it made editing when someone saw an error or wanted to add something much easier to do. So just kind of keep that in mind. There's an application for everything. InDesign is for multi-page and you want to use this program appropriately because if you don't, you're gonna spend more time editing your document than you actually did laying it out. And you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. All right, so now we got to place some elements and we'll talk about scale and proportion and we'll talk about some different things once we kind of get our elements in there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go in and place. Let's place our logo. 
And so there it is. And you'll notice because I drew the container first, look at what happened. Even though I drew the little tiny, tiny container there, uh, it placed it at 100% final output, right? So let's go back and then do that again. But this time we're just gonna go ahead and do file place. And we're gonna drag our little box to the right size. So it's gotta be about that big. All right, so there we go. So I'm just gonna move this thing over to the edge, right? I got a little tiny bit of wiggle room. It's not a lot actually. I only have a little tiny bit of wiggle room down here, but <laughs> it's okay for now. I got about a one eighth inch bleed there or so. Now you'll notice that this does bump right up to the edge of my third column. And remember, I'm gonna be flowing text to that third column. So I might need to make some adjustments as I get going here, but you'll probably have noticed on the uh, Canoe uh, website, and we'll just go back to the home, that this thing's black and white. Like the concept of it is very black and white with some shocking color every once in a while, but in essence, <laughs> it's black and white. So we're gonna use our black and white palette kind of as our inspiration. You'll actually notice this thing is really square and rectangular. So when we do containers and we create boxes and do different things, we're gonna try to make sure this thing is really square <laughs> by nature. Okay, so we're building the elements. So what's the deal? What's the catchphrase for this thing? Does canoe have a catchphrase? So we need something to add to the bottom of our thing here bringing EVs to everyone. So that's, we're gonna use that as their tagline. So you'll notice that if I go back to the home page, their, uh, their title text for their home page is electric cars, fleet, pickup trucks for clean energy. Electric cars, fleet, pickup trucks for clean energy. That's interesting. So in theory, I guess that kind of is their tagline. It's just embedded in their title tag what you got to kind of know what a title tag is in order to know that their tagline is embedded there. Electric cars, fleet pickup trucks for clean energy. So let's take our tagline here. So we're gonna go in here and use our text tool and type in uh, electric cars, fleet and pickup trucks for clean energy. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit, see what we got going on here. Electric cars, fleet, and pickup trucks for clean energy. Very rarely do I type that quickly and not have a typo. So I'm very proud of myself in that particular process. All right, so now uh, we're just gonna make the container fit the width of the left. Master, so if I zoom really far out, you're gonna notice the logo is here. The tagline is here. Now you'll notice in the logo, there are dashed lines around the name. So we're gonna use dashed lines as kind of a, a theme here as we're building some of our elements. So we're gonna use that as kind of our theme as we're building some of our elements. Now, let's, um, let's go in and start talking about typography. Let's start talking about those basic elements, right? Because we got to worry about scale and proportion now. So uh, remember, we want to stay in the 11, 12 point range for normal, what we would consider body copy. Uh, you can go up to 18 and 24 and 36 when we're doing header sizes and more call to action items. But I like to stay in the 12 to 14 point range for just clean type when we consider it body text quotation marks. Uh, so we need to find a, uh, we need to find a more modern-ish kind of typeface because this is a very kind of modern approach to cars. And I actually have this really weird typography set here. Uh, and I'm just gonna pick it because it's the top one and it's pretty neat and it's kind of interesting. You'll notice by mine that I've got type like nobody's business. <laughs> I've got so many typefaces because professors download different typefaces when they're teaching different things. And so I've got all kinds. So I'm gonna do Avenir because I really love Avenir as a typeface. Now, you'll notice that my text container I made to the full width of the three columns of my left. That allows me to do things like align it in the middle of the document, make it right aligned, make it justified, make it left aligned. It allows me to make sure that my text container my text frame 
fits the width of my thirds or the individual columns that I'm trying to create my text elements in. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, electric cars, fleet, and pickup or clean energy. So I'm just going to make the word clean energy a little bit more important. So I'm going to make it black so it's a little bit thicker. And so now you'll notice I'm starting to create visual separation, right? This is my tagline. It runs across to my logo over here. It's on technically an individual page, but we're gonna start kind of doing some layout here. Now, you'll notice the lines is the logo. So I'm gonna go in and use my line segment tool and I'm gonna find where that line starts. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna draw a line. So now you'll notice that this line looks like it's coming out of the logo line, right? So there it is. And you'll notice it's one point and I don't know, 0.5. Mm, nope, got to be a little thicker. So let's go 0.75. I'm trying to mimic the width of the line in the logo. So you can see it right there. It's really close. All right, so I have this line that I've drawn. So now I'm just going to hold down shift and I'm going to drag it. And I'm going to move it over here to the text for my tagline. And so now you'll notice, and these are visual things, so you need to start thinking visually. So I'm going to use my direct select. I'm going to drag this line in. I'm going to take it to the right edge of the column. All right, so now we have that thing basically lined up. Now you'll notice my line goes right to the period. So you see how that's lined up? So I can actually nudge this up and down. Right, and I'm gonna put it kind of right in the middle there. So now I know my line goes from the tagline and there it is all the way over there. So if I wanted to, I could run this across the bleed. Now I'll show you something when I do the, uh, when I'm actually working on this and remember I said, sometimes I hide the edges. I hide the container edges. So you can see that right there and I hide the guides. So now look what I get. Now you can really see how my layout is kind of working because I've stripped out all the busyness in the document. So look how clean and white space this is. You only see the containers when I mouse over the documents. You don't see any of the guides. Everything is super clean. So let's go back in and I'm gonna turn the guides back on. Because actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what I said I was doing when I create layouts using multi-page. I'm going to go ahead and snap my guides in for each one of the elements of my guides. Because then I don't actually need my guides anymore. So I'm going to bring this, snap that into there. And I should, so let's see now. Let's see. All right, so we got them all laid out. All right, so now I can snap to these things as I need to. So I have my tagline, I have my logo place. I've got to put a page number. So let's go up here. And this is just the basics for my page number. I'm going to go to type, <coughs> insert special character, marker, current page number, and that's going to drop that little A there. And that little A is just a space holder, right? So let's zoom in. I'm going to use my space bar so I can pan. So here's my little thing. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit just to make sure that it's in the right spot. Uh, I'm going to align it to the right just to make sure it's aligned with my column. And even this element, I need to make sure it's Avenir, right? I got to make sure it's Avenir because I want to use one to two typefaces to make sure this document is super clean kind of as I'm working through my document. So I think that the page number might be important. So let's make it, let's make it a little bit heavier, right? So remember, I'm on my master. So all I'm doing is laying out the elements for my master. So the only thing left I think I really need for my master is I think I want to draw a rectangular stripe across the top of this document. 
and I want to make it black so that it kind of mimics this black and white thing I have going on. It's kind of a theme I have going on. So I'm going to make that a little thinner. I'm going to move my A up so it feels like the stripe is kind of going to the A. Right? Kind of feels like I'm going to the A. I actually could make it slant so that it looks like it's leaning into the A. So here's my master. Now you'll notice page number one now has the master elements. And even though that's the cover page, I don't necessarily need those elements on the front or back, page one or four. I'm gonna leave them there for now, just so that you can see how the master works. Now we're gonna get into the layout of uh, the cover. Then we'll put a couple elements in the back cover and then we'll populate the spread. So front cover, I just need to put a really nice picture. So let's go in and gosh, there's some really great ones. So I don't know, what about this one? All right, now you'll notice that this thing is bigger than the container, right? So I have to double click and select the object. I'm gonna hold down shift option so I can scale from the center. And I'm gonna make this thing, and I'm gonna stretch it out so that my container fills the full width of my document. So I have my container placed. And remember, it went in higher, went in bigger than the frame I had pre-drawn. So I know that this is a pretty high quality image placed in the cover page of my document. Remember, these are my master elements. They're showing on page number one, even though I don't necessarily need them for page number one. So I'm gonna show you, if you go over to page number one and right click on it, you could do override master page elements. And we're actually gonna override the page elements. Click on that and you'll notice I can actually go in here and I can delete the elements I don't need, but it does not affect the other pages. See how that's still numbered three? The only reason I did that is because I actually need to make the cover page elements bigger. So I'm gonna actually delete the logo from page number one and I'm gonna go in and place the bigger version. All right, so I'm just gonna tap it and look how big it is, All right? It's huge. I need that for the cover page because the interior page has a little tiny logo, but the cover page needs the big logo, right? That's part of the design. So then I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna hold down shift option to make it a little bit smaller, but this is the gist of the logo I need here, right? So now I'm gonna snap it to center and you're gonna notice that it's scaled proportionately. So the distance from that edge of the column to that edge of the column is appropriate. I do have my original elements from my master, which are right here. I don't know if I need the stripes, but I might as well replicate them because I do have them for the interior. So I'm gonna go in and make the line a little bit thicker for the cover. So I'm gonna make that stripe, stripe above that picture. And I'm gonna do shift option, drop a stripe at the top. So you're gonna see what I'm doing here. And actually, if I zoom in, I'm just gonna make it the width of the document so you can see. I'm using the space bar. So I'm gonna replicate the elements from my master layout, even on the cover, even though I did an override of the master page settings. I wanna make sure that everything is consistent, kind of like a campaign would be, or a series of advertisements. I wanna make sure everything's consistent. So now I'm gonna move this down a little bit. So I have my cover here. <laughs> then I have this little weird rectangle thing I created from the master. Remember I released the master. So now I have this shape. I don't know if I need to use the shape, but being as I created it, maybe I'll figure out a way to use it on the cover. I wanted to copy that one tagline. So I might use that here. So I'm gonna shrink this over, right? Two thirds, one third. So I'm gonna make this stripe one third. So there it is, right? That I have from the original interior layout. Remember, here it is right here and I tilted it for the A. So I'm just replicating some of the elements, but what was that thing I wanted to copy? I wanted to be, uh, uh, let me go back. I think it was on the about, it was only about, yeah, Canoe's mission is to bring EVs to everyone. So I'm gonna copy that. 
I'm going to go into my text tool. Remember, I have to use Avenir and I'm going to use the two third, one third approach. So I'm going to make this two thirds of the page. I'm going to paste it. And then I need to make sure that my typography is the same, right? So beauty about this is it saves it and puts it at the top. So let's do that. I'm going to do uh, uh, oblique so that it leans a little bit, but EVs to everyone. I'm going to make that uh, heavy. Let's make the type bigger. And I'm actually trying to fill the two third, one third concept, right? Two third, one third. So I'm going to center it. Hold on, oblique. Uh, EVs to everyone. I'm going to make this a uh, heavy oblique. All right, so now we're just going to bump it down. And so I'm replicating the elements from my concept. So you'll notice I have the logo. I have the stripes that were in my interior. I have my message here now. So let's see what it looks like. I'm going to go in and uh, hide my guides. So now you can see my layout for my cover. And I'm going to start to try to replicate these elements. But look at this thing. See that big space there? So when I go back in, I've got to turn this thing back on. I need to center this so it's not so close to the picture. So I'm going to move this up. And I can hide the guides again. So let's hide the guides. So now you can see my layout from my cover. And you can also see the layout from my interior. So I'm replicating the same elements, leveraging my layout concept and the multi-page environment. So now let's go back over here. Let's turn our guides back on. Remember, I have these containers that I created. So first things first, I'll go in and place my images there. So let's place, and I already did that first picture. So let's do, uh, let's do maybe this one. Oh, but look what happened. See how small that picture is? It's really small because uh, it doesn't have high resolution. So let's see if any of the others are a little bit better. Nope, it's really small. So, oh, that one's better. Okay, good. All right, so let's get in here. Uh, copy, paste into. All right, so now we got to scale this thing down at least to the width. So let's see what we have here. Let's shrink that down. We're going to, uh, we're going to make the container bigger. So I'm just looking to see what I have from an element standpoint. Now, remember I snapped the guides to the interior of this. So I wanna make sure that my container fits this thing. Okay, so there we go. All right, so we have that. We have that container. So here's my next one. Uh, I kind of got the gist of how big I need it to be. So let's do this. Uh, place. Let's get in here and do the interior. I'm going to drag the container. There it is. All right. So I have my elements laid out. So now I need to take my text frame and I need to create the textual column for the interior left page. So I'm going to draw that container. I'm going to get into my notepad. So let's go into my canoe folder. Let's uh, open up my uh, copy. And so I got to start with the mission. So let's copy this, all right? And that's why I spent the time laying all this stuff out. It really helps my layout. So now when I paste that, here's my filler text. Now, remember, we've got to make sure that this is all the same copy. So we got to go have an ear. There it is. I want to make the Call to actions, 18 points. I want to make those black. All right, so we got the beginning of this thing started. Let's make sure the body text is 12 point, which I think it is. Yep, all right, good. And so now you could start to see, so what if I wanted to stretch this column out a little bit? So let's grab the handle, stretch it out a little bit. Let's go into our text wrap and give it an image wrap. And let's give it a border. 
And so now we're going to start playing around with the indent, but it's still two thirds, one third. I'm just playing around a little bit. So watch as I stretch this thing out. It'll actually run that sentence in between those pictures, right? So I'm starting to create my layout. These have a wrap to them and the text is being stretched around a one third with a little seam text that runs the full column. All right, so let's get into our uh, notepad. Let's grab our next one. Double click, enter, enter, enter. Paste that down. This has to be Avenir, has to be 12 point. Let's make the call to action, our 18 point heavy. All right, I hate hyphenation, so let's do that. And you'll notice, look at the weird wrap that's happening there. So I think I might have to, I think I'm gonna bump this back down, stretch this up to give me a really clean, layout. So I'm going to stretch it back down. And remember, right, as we start to paste our images, we're going to need to make a text wrap that goes across. All right, so next, and you're going to notice I'm working one paragraph at a time. So the next is this one. Double click, enter, 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 paste. Remember this little plus symbol is how you flow text. So I'm just gonna tap it there so it goes into the one column, but remember it's two column text. So let's double click that. We're gonna go into Avenir. We're gonna make this 18 point. We're gonna make it heavy. And so we're leveraging the guides and the elements that we already put together. So you can see this thing really coming together. So watch when I hide the guides, right? You're gonna notice, look how clean this is. Here's the cover. I have that same element stripe going on. I framed in the picture, there's the logo. But when you go to the interior pages, same top stripe, there's my space holder, my page number. Type is very clean, simple layout. Here's the footer from my master. And so I'm just gonna quickly go through and I'm gonna drop the rest of the elements in here just so that you can see kind of what is going on. All right, so there it is. <laughs> Let's go in. And I'm just going to grab the rest of my text. I think I got like a ridiculous amount of copy here. So I only really need the beginning of it. So let's copy that. Enter, 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 paste. Here's the last of the last. And remember, I got what much more copy than this, but I'm just going to go with enough to fill this thing. All right, so let's do heavy. This is 18 point. Uh, enter, bump that down. All right. So the layout's really coming along here. All right. Very simple, very modern. All right. So here's my little picture space holder. But now that I have the basic concept, I don't think I need that space holder. So let's do file place. <laughs> uh, the next one, let's do this. And this time I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to sneak a two thirds image in here just so that you can see it. So I'm gonna drop that in there just to show you layout, kind of how two thirds, one third can be broken apart here. So watch when I bump this up a little bit, 0.25 is pretty good. <coughs> so you'll notice it's still two third, one third, but I ate part of the two third to make a one third rag. So now if I place my other picture, just to kind of show you the rationale of going back and forth between two third and one third. I don't know, maybe this one. Let's drop that one in there. Just to give you the gist. So I'm gonna move this one over. Remember if you double click on it, it gets you inside the picture. So there it is. And then for the sake of the process, I might as well place the last picture or one last picture in the bottom space. So you can see the interaction between two thirds and one third. For the sake of the process, I'm gonna use a picture I already used from the cover, but we need the last picture down here. So we'll just drop it in there, right? 
and I technically have some text that's running through the bottom of this thing. But for the sake of the layout, I'm gonna remove that last paragraph just to make sure that this thing is clean. All right, so let's just hide the guides for a second, just so you can see layout. I'm just trying to show you two third, one third using typography, visual hierarchy, cover, interior spread, two third, one third, but one part of the design is two third image, one third text because I added a text wrap. Everything is based on the header footer layout, which is from our master, which has the tagline down here, the logo in the corner, the page space holder and the stripe. So I'm just creating kind of a funky little, very clean layout, <laughs> which brings us to the back cover, right? The back cover, I need to override the master on the back cover because I don't need, well, I might need, let's just say that I might need the little stripe here. So let's get rid of that. We'll keep this for now because I might introduce it, but I need to place <laughs> my black logo on the back cover just so that now for the sake of the process, I'm gonna make it black all the way to the edges. So I'm using the same shapes that I had from my master, right? I'm just introducing them. This is a little crooked for some reason. Let's do that. So I probably need to make the stripe a little bit bigger so you can see the whole logo, right? So zoom out. I probably won't need the stripe. This is kind of cool. So let's move it. Let's turn the guides back on because I want this to be the full width, but centered inside the document. So let's go into properties. Let's center it. Oops, I made it too big. Uh, let's go to like uh, 18 points or so. Move it down. All right, so we have our logo in there for our back cover. I'm gonna move it closer to the logo. So let's hide all this stuff again. So you can just see what my layout concept is, right? So here it is. And so I'm gonna save it. <laughs> now for the last part of the little process here, I'm going to uh, do a PDF save just so that you can kind of see the process, right? I'm gonna do press quality. Remember everything is linked. So everything is saved inside this document, right? This client folder. But now I have my PDF, so you can see my layout here. Now, you see how it's separated into individual pages because I didn't save my PDF as a spread or facing pages. Now, that's good for the web because you might wanna save individual pages, but it looks best when you actually go in. And let's do, uh, let's embed some thumbnails and let's do spreads just so that you could see the difference in the layout. And it's save and save and save and give it a minute. And so now you can see, look at this thing. Like it's created in these funky spreads. Look how cool that is, right? Well, you have to kind of visualize this thing as you're making it. So let's zoom it down. So that's what it looks like, right? The cover, the interior spread and the back cover but it looks interesting when you preview it and which most people do on the web, it all runs into itself. So see how they all touch, they run into themselves and it looks like one big poster layout. So a PDF is a powerful thing, but remember you have to have all of these elements in the folder so that the InDesign file remains intact. If you ever lose anything in the process, your file is gonna be disjointed. And the very last thing I like to do is just to show you is that you can always package your file. So watch what happens when I choose package. It created everything in this folder over here. My fonts, my links, Everything I used inside my document 
was created in this folder. This is what you'd give a printer. So, because if they ever wanted to open up your InDesign file and they had InDesign, created a PDF for them, created all the images in the links folder and created the fonts. They could see your design just as you created it on your computer, even if they didn't have all the fancy typefaces and everything. So packaging your file in InDesign as a final step for the client is really important. And that gives the client the original composition as it was meant to be seen if the software application is provided, if they have InDesign. So a really important step is that package step. If you save files all over your computer and you're trying to get to the final step and you don't know where all the files are, oh, I saved some to the images folder, I saved some to the download folder, I saved some to the client folder, you can always do file package and it will gather everything for you and put it on your desktop. That is the final folder as the final part of the process in InDesign when you're laying something out. All right, gang, we're at 8.05. That's about an hour and 35 minute lecture. That's how long I want to lecture so that it would give us a preview, give us a refresher, and also give you enough to ingest if you're going to watch it later. So you have your book assignments to do for InDesign. You have your out of book project. Everyone's done great. Everyone's done the first two learning modules. Everyone has submitted everything. So I'm not worried that you won't have it the same process and everyone do well and get everything in. Remember, next week we're going to do our final, a final out of book project. So make sure you have learning module three done before next Monday, because next Monday I'm going to preview your final project. I'm going to give you the week to complete it and submit it as a finished press quality PDF. So that's the time frame. So make sure by next one Monday you have all of learning module three done. Okay, gang, have a good evening. Uh, I'm going to end the recording here and I look forward to seeing your InDesign projects. Thank you, Professor. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you for logging on.